Was it confusing being different characters? Well, it was a little repertory company, you know, I mean, we had our own little thing going on there. And for the most part, we were completely different characters. Or we were ancestors, we were our own ancestors. Or at one point, I remember I was thrust into the future, and so I was I mean, crazy as a bed bug. I was Carolyn, you know, very wealthy, Miss Stoddard. I obviously had never married. And I was just really Looney Tunes. But that's the only instance in which I remember still being myself, but at a different time. Aside from that, by the time the show ended, I had been eight different people. And they were all really fun. I was. I was a Cockney. I was a Cockney dance hall girl. I was um, um, an insane person. Usually, I was somewhat insane. Most of my characters were a little, a little bit on the edge. I'm not sure what that says about me, but it was really fun. It behooved us to try to concentrate on exactly what we were doing at that moment in that room on that day, because people would try to describe what was about to happen or what had to happen. I do not to this day comprehend it. And yet my friend Grayson Hall, who had made a trip to work somewhere in, I think, Missouri, went into a, a diner, you know, to have a Coke or something, to have breakfast. And the little girl working behind the counter could tell her everything that had happened on Dark Shadows. She understood it totally. Grayson said it's the only time I knew what we were doing up there. <laughs> By California standards, it was a very, very small studio. But then we didn't have all that many sets, particularly in the beginning. So we would simply go from, you know, set to set. And uh, I think we rarely changed days within. I mean, of course, there was never any sun. I mean, there, it was always you know, dark or cloudy or overcast or something. <laughs> so there, were, there weren't many lighting changes. But um, the studio was was a nice one, and it was it was manageable because uh, only Dark Shadows was done there. We began in the ABC studios in the '60s. On, I mean, on 66th Street, and after I think a year, we had our own studio. Uh, on 53rd Street, and that was, it was really wonderful because um, nothing else was happening there. We didn't have to concern ourselves with other casts or other shows or anything. Everything we needed was contained in that building. But it was compact. I mean, I, I spacious is not a word I would use. Mm -hmm. It looks that way because uh, Cy Tomashoff, the set designer, did such a brilliant job in designing a set, particularly the, the uh, Collinwood set, the house where I lived, ostensibly. It, the tension sort of progressed through the day as, you know, as we came into taping, because we, we realized at some point that we actually were going to have to get in front of a camera and do this. <laughs> you know, finally the realization dawns. And then you get, one gets quite focused. I mean, you really do kind of zoom in on it. But uh, there were days particularly days when the most, this was the most difficult kind of show to do, uh, a day in which one would have, say, I would have three or four scenes with the same person in the same room, uh, and to remember, I mean literally, because we, we went through it so many different times, we would sometimes get to a point in the scene and say, haven't we done this? Did we go back? Have we jumped? You know, we, got, we would get confused just in terms of, of sequence, mm -hmm. um, which was just a matter of repetition. You know, we, we had already done it, but we hadn't done it for dress rehearsal or we hadn't done it for taping. At 8 o'clock in the morning, when we were coming in for the first time, for instance, for blocking, now the sh none of the show had been blocked. So we were busy uh, learning blocking, writing the blocking into our scripts so that it not be forgotten. Because once we got to camera blocking, you see, camera blocking was literally for the purposes of the cameras, the three, the three cameras, which at that time were very large and very clumsy, which is why, also why you see, uh, 
a camera bumping over a cable every once in a while. If the cable person didn't quite get the cable out of the way, the camera just ran over it. So they'd be sort of hitching the road, you know. But it was for the cameras and for their focus and for their shots and uh, for the TD, the technical director, so that he knew what, what he was to call, which shot he was to call at what time. Since once we started going, we just, you know, hit the ground running. We just took off. So we had to know what we were doing. We had to start thinking about what we were doing at 8 o'clock in the morning. And, it, and we, it, the easiest way to do it was just record it, just say X left, you know, whatever write it all down and then start memorizing that with the lines and it made it I think in some ways it made it easier because uh, f so frequently the lines were so repetitive that you think oh it's this one when I open the desk drawer but it's that one when I'm looking out the window and they'd be <laughs> virtually identical lines but I mean the camera people and the, you know everyone needed to know what the cue was so that the TD could call uh, you know, three, two, one, you could change cameras in the, in the control room without trying to figure out what we were actually going to do. <laughs> we used to get something called, uh, I don't know if you've heard this term, but we called it the orphan Annies. It's when you looked at the other actor and the other actor was literally like this. I mean, not focusing, thinking, what? And, and you, look, you would look at the person and think, uh-oh, he's in big trouble. <laughs> and this made me more, really made me more anxious than my own, you know, my own situation. I could pretty much cover myself. But when I realized I was going to have to cover someone else, I thought, now what is it he's supposed to say and how can I make sense of this? And your mind starts to work really quickly. Now, and there were a lot of those moments. I wouldn't say they were, they were frightening, but they were pretty anxiety-producing.